Hello there, this is Deborah, and we're going to make bath bombs today. These are some of the things you're going to need. I have a pan here to uh, put the bath bombs in. I have some crema tata. These are basic things that you use when you make bath bombs. I have some cornstarch. Now this is uh, optional, but it works out really good. I have some buttermilk powder. It makes awesome little bubbles in the tub, and you don't have to use any um, SLSA or SL. A S L S. You could just use uh, regular buttermilk there. <laughs> I'm going to be using some citrus acid. This is a non-GMO. I will put in the description area where you can find these products. But most of the products you can actually find in your grocery store. So that makes it awesome. I'm going to be using some avocado kernel oil. Now you can use any light oil, but this one works out really good for these bath bombs. I'm going to be using some white kaolin clay that helps to hold the fragrance uh, in your bath bombs. I'm going to be using some polysorbate 80, which is a must if you're doing resale. This helps to dispense the oils and it keeps the rings out from around the tub. Now I have here from New Nurture Soap. This is a certified uh, bath bomb dye that I'm going to be using. It doesn't take a lot of it, just a little bit there. Uh, for my wet agent, I'm going to be using witch hazel. You can use alcohol or water, but I'm going to be using witch hazel today for this recipe. Okay, these are some of the uh, cookie cutters, the keepsake cookie cutters that I'm going to be using. Now, the metal ones, they're going to be made for my grandkids. They like the dinosaurs. The plastic ones are great for resale, but you don't want to use the metal ones in the bathtub. Uh, if you do, you... I would say make sure you put it instructions that make sure they don't step on them in the tub. So I would just say don't use them. But my grandbabies, they know how to use them, so it works out really good. So uh, I'm going to be using the plastics for resale and also um, for the craft shows that's coming up. Now I went together, I've already mixed all my ingredients together here. I'm just adding the wet agency. This is not a good bath bomb day. I have had to re-wet, re-wet. Uh, but it's, so far it is starting to work out. So if you have that trouble, you just have to keep working with it and it will come out okay. So I'm basically just trying to make a nice firm ball. As you can see, I have one now, so that's good to go. So I have already wet these. <laughs> this is the second time. So you don't want to wet too much, but it is so, it's so much humidity that they're drying out really, really fast because I was kind of talking doing other things here and I wasn't really working with it so now we're working it back up to get it going here <laughs> now if you're wondering if the uh, cookie cutters will float we shall see later on at the end that they will float so I will demonstrate that later so right now uh, basically I have like I said I've made put all my ingredients together and I will have a recipe for you if you like to uh, use that recipe it works it's a tried and true recipe for me and it works out really good so just trying to make get a firm ball here this is still not quite as firm sometimes you don't have to add more uh, wet agents or anything uh, liquid you just keep uh, mixing and mixing and try to mix it all together and see how if it can get thick one of the things you want to make sure that your bath bombs are heavy but not too heavy not too wet but just not light where if you put it together it just falls apart one good thing about using the cookie cutters uh, you don't have to worry about uh, trying to get them out of the cookie cutters you just put them right into the bathtub and enjoy the bubbles and and the little uh, activity that it has go to go on with it most of the kids love all the different uh, colors and everything and I like to put some color in beds in my uh, bath bombs too so I will be adding that in as well. Now, like I said, these metal ones are going to the grandkids. They know how to use them, so it's not a problem. But if you was going to sell that, I, I don't know if I would sell the metal ones, although they're really pretty. I think I would just use them for family. But if you were selling them, you want to use the plastic ones. That way, you're not going to have any troubles. Uh, I love making them into cookie cutters. I don't see a lot of bath bombers making them into cookie cutters. Maybe because they want that free uh, flow. They do flow really good outside of the cookie cutter. But I really want to give my customers a little keepsake. So that's what this was all about. Was uh, giving a keepsake something that they can use afterwards. And they will float. And that's what's the most important thing is they will float. So you will see how much uh, action they have in the, in the water later on.
but I just love making them. And like I said, if you're really worried about uh, bath bombs uh, cracking and can't get them out of the mold, <laughs> then in this case, you can leave them in the mold because it's actually part of the gift there. So once you finish the bath bomb, you have a nice little cookie cutter. And they're just really fantastic for the holidays that's coming up. And I love, you know, they pack really well. You don't have to pack them too heavy. Although I'm pressing them down trying to make sure they're nice and even. Although you don't have to pack them quite as, you know, they're not going to come out of the mold. So, But I do like to put add more color to them so that they can have a lot of color to them. And these are really cute. My granddaughter love uh, the unicorn. And um, so, and the boys, my grandsons, they love these uh, dinosaurs. <laughs> And my customers uh, like the, uh, I sell a lot of the dinosaur, the dinosaur eggs. I sell a lot of bath bombs. For the last six years, uh, I sell a lot of bath bombs. Sometimes they say to me, well, don't you have a lot of competition with all the people making bath bombs at home and in the stores? No, not really. Once you get a customer base that really likes your products, you just good to go. You don't have to worry. You just make the products and they will sell. Now, I don't make a lot of bath bombs ahead of time. I will make them, you know, maybe a month supply, but not past that because um, I just like to make them fresh. Although my customers have told me that they have bath bombs of mine for two years and they're still floating and still moving around. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I would never, uh, you know, try to sell a bath bomb that old. <laughs> but, you know, if they want to keep them like that, it's strictly up to them. But I like to make them, uh, the fresher the bath bomb, the more they really flow and dance around in the water and the colors are really vibrant. So it just makes it so much better when you don't make them, you know, too many ahead of time like that. But a lot of companies, I'm sure they do. So each is on. <laughs> this works out good for me, though. Uh, if you see me brushing up the, uh, the crumbs here, it's because they still moist. They're, they're not dry sometimes they get dry i have had that to happen to me when i brushed them up and tried to use them they was like too dry you don't want to add too much liquid to them afterwards so usually if you have a lot left over like that if you i don't have a lot but if you did you can always make fairy dust <laughs> there's a lot of my older customers they don't like the bath bombs they would rather much have the uh, have the the dust so it's just strictly up to what you want to do with it but i've Today it's just worked out really good where I can keep the uh, the uh, bath bomb here really firm. I mean, nice and moist. It has it was rough earlier, but I have the uh, I cut the machine on that works to keep some, get some of the humidity out. So dehumidifier, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> oh boy. But anyway, I'm just speeding along because I have a this is bath bomb day, so I have tons and tons of bath bombs to make. I would say today I have to at least make about, I don't know, 100 bath bombs or more. I usually like to buy the citric acid in uh, 100 pounds, but uh, lately I have 50 pounds. So I will have to buy another 50 pounds here before the holidays are up because I really sell a lot of bath bombs. I really depend on that because when the soaps, you know, soaps, when you buy soaps, you know, you use it and you still got some, but the bath bombs is like a one-time deal. So I sell a lot of bath bombs and um, my customers love them. So that's good. So today the fragrance oil that I'm using here is called Monkey Fart. <laughs> yeah, they love this Monkey Fart smell. It has that tropical smell. I don't like the name, but I didn't come up with the name. Someone else did. But the kids love them. The grown-ups love them. So that's really all that matters. As you can see, it's still nice and firm. firm and these are from uh, the crumbs that fell. These are actually where, you know, where I was dropping it once I was making it. Usually it just gets so dry, but it worked out really good. Now, I, you can use almost anything to make a bath bomb. As you can see here, I got these little measuring cups, and they worked out really good. These are some little hearts for my granddaughter's birthday, which is coming up. And I have uh, some other birthdays that I'm working on as well. So with that being said, this is it. Just to show you, give you an idea. You don't have to worry about any breakage because they're going to stay inside of the mold. Now here we go. We're going to see how they float. Let's just see if this floats. Okay, here we go. As you can see, it is it's holding up. It's floating really good and it has a lot of 
action going on there. So you do get some action if you're still inside of the cookie cutter. Okay, just turn it on the other side and you can see the buttermilk is doing its job. So it all went well today. So there you have it. You have bath bomb with the keepsake cookie cutter. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you make some bath bombs. But if you don't, you can always go to my website and find them on the website. Thank you so much.